And we're back with some more Mountain Blade Warband. And today we're going to be covering probably the best mechanic in the game for making money, trade. It, it, I didn't touch it for ages, but it turns out to be incredibly powerful and actually very simple. We're just a, we're at a villager. Villages are sort of the workhorses of the entire in industry, and you can buy stuff from here really cheap. For example, here is dyes. You can buy them for 72. Of course, you have nothing to measure this by. You don't know what else when you're first start up it, it's worth or where you could sell it for. But trust me, you can sell these for about 200 to 220 in most cities. And why is that? Well, let's just skip forward to a city. Ooh, we'll take that pottery too. Now, when I say most cities, there is a caveat. They have to be nowhere near the cities where you bought them. Well, that's the sort of rough estimate here. For example, we bought dyes all throughout this area. Dyes are very common throughout this uh, Saranid Sultanate. So their cities, they're saturated and they don't care. But here's a weird mechanic of this game. If you go into, say, a marketplace here, marketplaces have a demand for literally everything. Literally everything you can possibly buy or sell, these places have a demand for them. And the demand slowly goes up over time if that demand is not fed. So even though this place doesn't need dyes for any reason whatsoever, the demand for dyes will keep rising, and the longer it goes without them getting a supply of dye, the more the price goes up. So now we're going to take all those dyes that we bought. Well, there's a bunch of other stuff in the industry. Don't worry about those for the moment. But we take some of those dyes we bought, and we'll sell them 200, well, one of them, and they'll get another 206. If we try to sell them a second one, it'll ease into our profit slightly, but, well, no, we won't. We'll just take that 206, and we'll move on to the next city. In fact, I've done another bunch of trading in the background. And then we just leave here, and then we hit up a couple more villages, and we're going to head over there over to Uxel. We should be able to get a decent price here, though I haven't quite tested it yet. Uh, we'll check the trade goods and 200 for dyes. Okay. Well, I like to spread out the load so that uh, all of these slowly accumulate more and more demand. If you sell multiples at one place, so if you sell lots here and lots there, then when you come back around the next time around, they'll both be fully saturated. What you like to do is sell one here, one here, one here, and just keep spreading them out around the place. The actual main limiting factor here is your inventory size, because you can find stuff for cheap in a lot of villages in a lot of places. For example, you can buy spices for cheap. We've got these for about 500. Uh, flax you can pick up for about ooh, 70 to 80 in some places. Oh, velvet you can pick up cheap in only a few places. Pottery will sell for about 100 everywhere. You know what? I'll put up a quick list here of uh, the main ones that are important. Velvet is probably the big one. You can get that for cheap and it sells for about 950. Oh, I should really point out this all depends a whole bunch on uh, your character as well. We've got our trade here up to level 4, so it's kind of messing with the stats a bit. But we're going to assume you've got, like, say, level 3 in trading. So to trade, all you do is take that list in the description and buy stuff when it's well below that price so that you can make a decent profit. You know, you want to look at about 30 to 60% profit margin if you can. Uh, dump that into your inventory and then just carry it around with you. And then every city you hit up, just check the price and see if it'll sell for a good good bang. So for, for example, there, Velvet is selling for 953. Now, I normally sell it off at about 950. So yes, we will take that. Oh, do they have the money? Yes, they do. So we sell it off pottery. I sell about 100. Flax, I'll sell about 140. But I know we're coming up in a special place. So you know what? I'll cover that in a minute. Now, there is some other exceptions, like we're going to look at Smoked Fisher. This sells for 73 in the city. In fact, that's a really good deal. 73 is very good for fish. However, fish, there's a whole bunch of fish you can usually buy for cheap around Jalcala, or whatever that's called. And then you can usually buy a whole bunch of cheap fish cheap over here in Wurchek, or maybe salt there and fish there. Uh, I don't know, as I pass through, you see, you'll get fish for about 20. So you'll be able to buy it for about 20, 25, and then you can sell it for 70 in other places. And if you hold on to it, depending on what way you go, and you end up in, say, the deserty areas over here, yeah, they'll pay 70 for fish as well. It seems fish is not that common over there. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next city, and I'll just show you what a normal trade would look like. We do a quick stop at the towns along the way. The reason being those towns, they provide you with, well, the cheap goods you're going to get. Uh, oh, grain for nine, that's good. You can usually sell that for about 30. And this is highly addictive doing it this way. It's amazing, you just get to run around and go, oh, I'd like to buy this, I'd like to buy that, and you keep looking for new deals. I don't know, I find it highly addictive anyway. Ooh, 214 for dyes. In fact, we'll sell two of them to you. Unfortunately, they don't seem to have anything else worthwhile. Um, yeah, this is maybe a bad demonstration city. Let's let's hop on to the next one. We're going to head over to Praveen. Let's have a quick look and see. Ooh, they got cheap ale. Ale sells for about 100. Uh, flax sells for about 140, so we'll grab a couple of those, especially because I know there's a, a nice flax place coming up. Sell some dyes for 200. Oh, eight, 80s for spices, normally buy for 550. Uh, pottery selling for over 100, we'll take that. And boom, we've now received 1,084. Actually, wait, no, we're going to buy some of that ale. Uh, we can sell that not a little bit further on. You know what, that's fine. And, and this is sort of how it goes, though at the same time, 
I try and go through here and look for weapons and a few other bits and bobs like, ooh, there's a balanced military cleaver. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that. That will look wonderful on one of our people. As we head over to our next location, which is going to be Tyr, we're taking a little bit of a detour through here. These villages don't usually get raided, which means they sometimes have an awful lot of goods for cheap prices, namely because they don't get hit. One of the mechanics of this game is people go around and raid villages, and when they do it resets the, the wealth of the village, and it does affect how much resources they produce and how cheap the, the goods they're producing are. They're pretty much the source of all goods, so a lot of raiding in an area can drive up the prices in cities because they will won't be getting any of the resources they want. You can take advantage of this in, in little ways. Anyway, let's just uh, skip time forward a bit here. Oh, stopping at this village here, I just want to point out some of the crazy deals you can get. There's smoked fish for seven. We can sell that for 70 plus in several places, so that's just, yep, that's just easy money. Uh, this marketplace here, if I recall, is this the one that is good for flax? Yes. This is a unique one. There's a few places like this. This city actually produces cloth, and for that it requires flax. So this can actually drive the price of flax higher than it could in any other place, a place that doesn't have a demand for it. Places that don't have a natural demand will cap at a, a lower level, but places that have a demand and don't get it will go well above that level, meaning you can score big time by bringing a bunch of flax here. That's just, what, 880 dinars, and we spent about 100 apiece for each one of those, so we made a profit of about 480 on that. Also, we bought this ale for pretty cheap. You know what? We'll sell off a couple of those while we're here. Oh, and I forgot the dyes as well, which we brought all the way from the Saranid Sultanate, and those spices, yep, yeah, we'll, we'll sell those off as well. Um, oh, wait, no, we can't do that. They've got... Damn it, they don't have enough money to pay us. One second. You just... Uh, trick for that just go into another one of the areas and you can sell them off uh, all of these are separate marketplaces with their own separate money amounts one really nice thing to do is once you've got down your basics of trading and you're going with your dyes and a fish and a few other bits and pieces that you you know the prices for and you get comfortable with what you'll end up doing is say grabbing something like a uh, wool cloth and carrying it around in your inventory and check it at every place to see what the price is and eventually you'll figure out what the average price in most places is and then you can find areas where oh the price is below that we can buy it and sell it for a profit However, there's a few things that are terrible, like wool cloth, I've never been able to find a place that pays good money for it. It's always expensive everywhere to buy and to sell, so it's just not worth it. And it doesn't seem to be produced in villages, it's only produced in cities, and they always overcharge you. So you can really make the big bucks on selling stuff you buy in cities, or uh, in towns. Oh, and grain is a bit of a trap, you've got to be careful with that one. I try not to hold on to it, if it sells for above 30, I usually get rid of it. The reason being is you'll just clog up your inventory. And iron can sell for up to 300, but honestly, about 250 is about as high as you get it in most places. So we'll, oh, damn it, they still don't have enough money. My bad. When it's getting to the point where you're clearing out their entire amount of money in their inventory, you know you've probably traded just a little bit too much. Oh, mass advantages as well. You're, since you're traveling around so much, you get to find, oh, there's a tempered military cleaver. Ooh, what have we got? We got balanced. You know, I I, I would like it, but we're going to save that. Uh, we, we need to buy a business. Uh, actually, let's do that right here. We're going to take a walk through the streets and we're going to go find ourselves the uh, person in charge. They're usually not that hard to spot, though in some places they are a bit of a pain. Where are you? They're normally wearing fancy clothing. One moment. Here we are. How you going? Don't mind the horse. This is, this is the Guildmaster. We would like to buy a land for a productive enterprise. Now, there's a whole bunch of ones in here and we're going to look at Velvet from Silk and Dye. This is pretty much always the best one you can get. Uh, this will give us a profit of about 477. This is not great, not terrible. And it's going to cost us 10,000 dinars. That's expensive, but it's constant money that keeps coming in all the time. And done. Now, let's just leave here for a second. I just want to show you something. If you go to reports, we can go view our weekly budget. And this tells us the net revenue. I've already purchased three properties along the way. So we've got 979 from Rivercheg, Kodan is 524, and Itch Itchamor is 383. This is how much money you make. These are all velvet places. Pretty much 90% of the towns you're going to want to put velvet ones in. It gives you the most money. They're also the most expensive, but since they give you the most return, you're just better off going that way. The plan. Once I discovered the joy of trade, something wonderful happened here. The thing is, normally how you make money is you go around fighting people and killing them. And you have to go hunt down bandits or, you know, swear vassalage to someone or something like that. No, no longer. You can just run around trading, and so long as everyone's happy with you, you can make enormous wads of cash. And what do you do with that money? Well, you immediately go to every single city. Once you get enough money, you go to every city you can find, and you buy a business. Every single one of these cities can support a business. And each loop we take around this whole place will produce us about mm, 10 grand, give or take. And then we use that to buy a business. So every rotation you're going to buy a business. And then as it goes, it gets even better. Because you get more money out of the businesses that helps you buy more businesses faster. And then it snowballs out of control. Simultaneously, you're also visiting every single shop on, along the way. And you can have a quick check in the arms merchant for good weapons. I'd keep an eye out for those military cleavers. They're 
best one-handed damage you can get. You can also keep a good eye out for bows and cheap military equipment like good armors at, you know, reasonable prices. For example, we've got a charger. Oh, it's healed. Damn it. I wanted to demonstrate that. This is a charger we bought that was lame. That's why its sell price is so low. This is a lame charger when we bought it. You leave that in your inventory and lame chargers can heal, or lame horses of any type can heal. Once you put them in your inventory, they will eventually heal up. Only lame, swayback doesn't do anything. Swayback ones will always be remain swaybacked. But you can buy a lame horse for a fraction of the price. I think this cost me about 1200 And now that it's healed up, we have a fully functional war charger that we can ride on. Keep an eye out for these and you can get all your people on good horses for reasonably cheap if you keep an eye out. Did I mention as well that feeding your party is also incredibly cheap because you've got all the best deals in the entire kingdom and you know where to get them. Uh, you're constantly stocked up on everything you're going to need. So you've got that going on, so all you really need to, pr to do is make sure that no one bothers you. And that is why we hired a whole bunch of Kurgit Lancers. Kurgit Lancers, cheap, easy to maintain, and once you've got enough of them, bandits don't even look at you. You can just go and do your thing and not have to worry. But there's even more benefits. Here we've hit a quick stop in Rivicheg. Now, the great thing about Rivicheg is nearby you will find these uh, Sea Raiders. The Sea Raiders are very plentiful around this area. And the thing is, it's sometimes a good idea to farm them, especially when you show up here, and remember, you're travelling around a lot, and everywhere you stop, in four places, you want to check to see if the tavern has a ransom broker. There's none here, unfortunately, but let's assume that there was a ransom broker here while you were passing through on your trade group. Well, you'd want to go raiding then and capture as many of them as possible. So what we want to do is go visit our dye works here. We bought a dye works here specifically because it's right it's right beside that uh, that bandit spawner. And then we go in here and say hello to our master dye maker. And normally you wouldn't really need to do this, but what we want to do is let's check the inventories. And then what we do is we dump all this stuff out of our inventory. This allows us to leave all the stuff here in storage and we can come back and collect it later. The only thing you can't put in here is horses. It turns out horses can't fit in storage for... Oh, wait, they changed that. Huh, you weren't able to do that before. Never mind. Uh, so this guy will hold on to uh, all that stuff for us. That won't, He won't actually use any of that. Normally that's meant to be you can put inventory in there like dyes and velvet or dyes and silk so that they can actually use it in production. But you can use it for storage. And now that our inventory is empty, we can go off raiding. That means we can pop right over here to that Sea Raider landing and get ourselves as many, uh, capture as many Sea Raiders as we possibly can. Would you look at that, 27 Sea Raiders. There's also another reason I like to use the uh, Kurgit Lancers. Kurgit Lancers are armed with a variety of weapons, but some of them come armed with maces. Maces are a blunt weapon, which means you're always going to capture a percentage of the enemies because a percentage of your troops are always using maces. This makes them very, very useful. Uh, let's go kill some of these. Where is it? Uh, just charge. We're probably going to end up slaughtering a bunch of them, but that's not a big deal. Go on, you monsters. Killed a lot of them. Well, okay. We want to capture at least a few. This is a good way to farm lots and lots of money by capturing lots and lots of raiders in one area, but only while the ransom broker is there. Trying to actually do it any other way is kind of... Ooh. One second, I should probably concentrate on not dying for a minute. With the battle done, we go capture the raiders. We can only hold five because that's the prisoner capacity we went with. Ooh, gear exit. We'll take some of that too. And of course, we have plenty of room in our inventory because we dumped off all of our trade goods. And then we head back to base, sell off the prisoners, and then once we've once the slave trader leaves or we run out of bandits to capture, well, then we just move on and continue trading. Of course, the proof of anything is in the pudding. So what I intend to do is I'm going to wander around the map, do one full rotation, end up back in Rivicheg, and we're going to see how much money we can make. I'm not going to do any quests, I'm not going to go attack any bandits or get involved in any fights. All we're going to do is just do purely trade, just to see how much money we can track in. We'll have to subtract however much comes in from our businesses, but that's a little bit of simple math, I'm sure we can figure it out. Oh, this is what we have in our inventory to start. You never end up with nothing in your inventory anymore. You're always going to have stuff in your inventory once you become a trader. All right, see you in five.
in Rivercheg after our little jaunt all the way around Calradia. Of course, the moment of truth, how much did we actually scrape in in trade? In trade alone, now we did actually gain about 1700 from businesses and enterprises, but minus that, we came out with 8,222 dinars in profit just from pure trade, just pure trade alone. Now, we did oh, we did get involved in one fight on the way back. Some uh, some Sea Raiders decided to pick a fight with us. We killed them, but I think that gave us a few hundred dinars. I, I can't be sure. I, I wasn't really paying too much attention, to be honest. But combined with our, our trade, combined with the enterprises, brings us up to about 9,951 dinars for a single rotation. Now, I would like to point out, we got a little bit unlucky on this run. We got lucky in some ways and unlucky in others, but uh, the one that really hurts us here is the silk. There was a whole bunch of silk for sale around here, and I kind of had to buy it. But this stuff will all sell for about 800 and... Or was it? Yeah, no, sorry, 550 for the silk. So there's about two and a half grand here in, in resources. Like Just the amount of resources we already have in our inventory that we still got to sell when we move on, we're well over the 10G mark. You'll average about eight to ten grand every rotation once you get good enough at it and you get used to the trade. And at that point, well, buy businesses. The four places you want to buy businesses first are Rivacheg first. It gives you the best return on investment. Next up, I'd probably recommend Ichimor or Ichimor has Desert Bandits or whatever you call them. There's it's, ah, Step Bandits. There's Step Bandits here, which means there's plenty of them to farm. And if you get the quest to take out the Step Bandit layer, that's an extra 1500 you're bringing home that day. Uh, then over here, there's Amarad. This one usually has the Desert Bandit layer burn nearby, so getting a uh, a dye factory there is also good as well because you can dump off your your inventory so that you can go raid them and get as many prisoners as you want. And then there's one more that I usually use, and that is Uxal down here. This has Forest Bandits, though honestly, mm, this would be the last one, normally because the Forest Bandits down here are very slow and usually get killed before you even get a chance to go near them. Uh, as well as that, there is one last bandit encampment that usually shows up. It's in here somewhere. It's the uh, mountain bandits. I don't bother because they're just a pain to harvest because they're up in the mountains and your cavalry don't do very well up there. It's just annoying. I, I prefer to just leave them alone. Oh, and there's one more. I forgot. Kudan. There is... Where is it? Oh, I didn't actually expose this one yet, but there's also another bandit layer up here. So if you can get a velvet factory here first... So, Rivacheg, Kudan, Ichimura, and Amarad. Oh, and then finally, Uxal. Get all of those, the, the dive factories first, and you have plenty of places. If you find, if you go into the tavern and find that they have a ransom broker, then you will be able to make an absolute fortune by trading the prisoners nearby. Now, this is sort of, uh, this is sort of the main gameplay loop, and I really like it because it's, it keeps me engaged the whole time. Namely because you're still looking at, you're constantly looking out for good trade deals. Like sometimes you'll find that iron is very cheap here, other times it won't be. Uh, sometimes you'll find places that have very cheap oil, and it might be only once every three or four rotations you find that. There's all sorts of products you can get into and find out that are good. I mean, honey is very rare to find in a, in a village, but usually honey sells for about 200, and you can find it in villages for 70 to 80. But if it's in your inventory for too long, your own people will eat it. Uh, so you kind of want to get it early in the day so you can hopefully get it to a, a city that's going to have a decent price for it. Probably not the closest one, but let's just say I have a lot of fun trying to figure out how to trade things correctly. At the same time, you get to stop off every so often and you get to kill step bandits or whoever. You you go to hunt down their lairs and you get the quest for them and get to do a little bit of killing. It sort of breaks up the, the trading, which is very nice. There are a few downsides to this, of course. Uh, the main one is ambushes. You'll get ambushed. You, you have a potential to get ambushed every time you enter a town or village at night. And you're a trader. You're going to be plowing through places, an awful lot of places, every single day, and you're going to be going through some of them at night. So you will get ambushed, and sometimes you will not survive. <laughs> Usually you can take them, it's just uh, sometimes you end up in an unfair situation. This is why the character is sort of designed this way. They're a pretty decent trader, but they're also a good fighter. They're more of an all-round generalist. You could definitely min-max this a lot more. You could definitely cut down on the trade, maybe reduce that down to two, use the books to get a, an extra one to bring up to three, and then just stay there. It'll be a little bit longer of a grind, grinding up all the, the money, but you definitely have more points to spare for combat. Personally, I like to make things a little bit easier and, you know, just more fun, and uh, min-maxing so much that it takes you hours longer to play the game does not sound like fun to me. I'd prefer to, you know, have a little bit more fun, make a little bit more cash, and maybe be a little bit of less of a combat god and more of a, a monstrous trader. But that should be about the second last video. I think the next video, I'm going to do a little bit of work on this in the background where we'll we'll basically run around trading until we've got all of the businesses maxed out. And for reference, about halfway through, once we've got about half of all of the towns with the business in them, then I'll start really looking hard into getting all of the rest of our party up in good armour. The armour and horses are very expensive, but about then they should have the strength and the horse riding requirements to take all the good stuff. And we'll have a little bit of spare cash because we'll be making so much. Anyway... 
I'm uh, going to cut this out here before I waffle anymore. I hope you enjoyed and good luck. <laughs>